COVID is still raging in Europe and this directly affects us. Lamy, it's all getting a bit complicated. Can I just, the, yes, the, the issue, I don't, I'll book the 14th because obviously things are now getting booked up. What happens if we just don't have the weather for it? Yes. Um, it's literally just that we're shorthanded trying to get home. You know, we'll take anything at the moment, like a, a slightly dodgy mooring ball <laughs> with a, a, you know, a half rusted shackle sounds appealing at this present time. Ruby rose, ruby like the gem, rose like the flower. Going to Jersey, yep. obviously, is mm -hmm. one option. Unfortunately, we called Guernsey this morning to say, can we just stop in Bray, which is in Orderney for the night? Just anchor, knock it off the boat, fly, clear your flag, tell you where we are. They said no. So to avoid essentially arriving in the UK at night, ideally, we would go to Orderney first because that is the narrowest point. Yeah that you can cross the channel yes. at, but they're not allowing us to stop at Orderney. Yep. So the alternatives are, we go straight from Jersey or we go from Cherbourg. But we have to stop in Jersey no. because you are meant to be out of the country by the 20th. You've done your three months here. It's one of those sails where it's not long enough to be able to get into the, the rhythm of it. And it's not short enough to be able to do it without having to cross shipping lanes at night. And that is my big issue. I've done the shipping lanes at night once before and it wasn't, it was pretty stressful. We can get into Jersey within 48, with a 48 hour notice, notice, but he said that physically there's no availability to get into the marina. Golf 007. Yep. Okay, Carl with a K, thank you so much for your help. Ah, uh, Carl, you're, you're a gem. Thanks so much. Okay, have a nice day. Carl's a gem. <laughs> so we're in the diary um, for the 14th. The problem is that literally every British sailor going either north or south wants to get in. What do they normally do? They normally raft. Oh, I see. Good thing you called Nick, because normally we wouldn't have called in advance, we would have just like turned up. Good morning. You've got me today. Normally you have the beautiful one, but now you've just got me, the grumpy one. Um, it is 10 o'clock in the morning. It, we're in uh, Roscoff, which is a place we've never been to before. After probably one of our best sails of the season. I think definitely I would say it was one of the best sails of the season. Um, lovely downwind sail, a little bit rolly, a bit of a big swell, but nice. Sat in the sun, having a gas all day. So now we're off to explore a little bit of Roscoff, a little bit of this beautiful North Botanic Port, just to put you in perspective as to where we are and what the time frame is for everything that we're doing. COVID is still raging in Europe and this directly affects us. At the moment, it seems as if British government is thinking of imposing quarantines on France and that will happen within the next week or so. Teresa and I are booked in for next Friday, this time next week, to be in Jersey, and hopefully we can get in before they impose a quarantine. But yeah, things are strange and different at the moment, but I suppose that's the rest of the world. But by the time this episode comes out, who knows, we could all be vaccinated and walking around <laughs> like bloody zombies. Anyway. He's <laughs> hoping. He's hoping, yeah, yeah, so this will be airing. Do you remember that time that the apocalypse occurred? And they were all laughing about it back in August? Anyway. Time to go and see Roscoff. I hope you enjoy this. Apparently there's a uh, natural like reserve park here. What do you think, babe? Charming, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely little fishing port. The weather today is like, it's quite cool. It's like really moody and I like it. Yes, you would. Wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you would like it if it's moody, wouldn't you? Hey, you'd love it. Now, should we go and have a lovely pastry for you? Is that what we want? Or do we want to have a galette in an hour and a half? I think through your expression, you're telling me what you want. So here we are in um, the centre of the Vieille port of Roscoff. Beautiful. I mean, it's still a bit sleepy. Um, a bit like you. A bit like me, actually, yes. Oh, hello. Yes, Teresa spotted the boulangerie, so <laughs> all filming has to stop for a few minutes. 
um, while she goes and gets us a pastry. Well, you can get us one to share. So if you want a discussion about the tide, we always tend to look when we're looking at tidal flows, uh, a fixed point in the water and see how much water disturbance it is. The tide here through this point, which is the area we came through yesterday, uh, flows at four to five knots um, mid-tide, which is why you've got to get it right. And I'll show you, if you just look at the, uh, the bridge buttresses, uh, you can get a good idea of that. So here we are, lovely little medieval town. Um, behind me, there is a 16th century granite church, which is super pretty. And um, yeah, we'll just wander around here, take in the sights. But this afternoon, we've got to start doing boat jobs. As I've already mentioned, uh, we stand at a point where the UK seems to be considering imposing quarantine from France, or from arrivals from France which means that we may just have to go back to the UK earlier to avoid that if we can. And that involves getting Ruby Rose ready for offshore sailing. So scrubbing the hull, making sure everything's okay, making sure as we're night sailing, all the lights, AIs, transponders, all the bulbs work and getting the jack lines on and safety harnesses ready. So there, there you go. That's uh, going to be our next couple of days. Yeah, there's only me and my wife on board, so it's just a two hours. Okay, that's fantastic. So we radio, should we, we radio, up, radio you up when we get in just to find out where the pontoon is, do we? Nick paces when he's on the phone. <laughs> Can't talk to someone on the phone without pacing back and forth. I think it's physically impossible for him. He's on the phone to Jersey Marina at the moment. So the UK are making grumblings about putting France on the uh, quarantine list and uh, we want to get to Jersey before that happens because Jersey will probably follow suit and we don't want to be in quarantine. So we're booked in for Jersey for a week's time and we're trying to get in earlier but they've been saying that they don't have any spaces so that's what Nick's on the phone to them about right now trying to get us in like ASAP. <sighs> Tell you what, it's been a bit stressful for the last few days because yeah. the France numbers are just going up and up and up and up and uh, there's been lots of rumours flying around on the news media websites that uh, the UK will close, not close their borders, but will enforce quarantine to, to France arrivals. And that would throw a bit of a spanner in the works. So, okay, so we'll, okay, thank you so much. That's super kind of you and it's so, it's a massive stress. Okay, uh, Simon, you're a gem, a gem. Absolutely, thank you so much, have a lovely <laughs> afternoon. Simon's also a gem. <laughs> Simon the gem. Simon the gem, Tuesday. So what happened? Uh, they had to phone and I just said, look, we don't have the weather to get to you on Wednesday, Thursday. Mm. And he's like, um, I've changed your booking. It's now for Tuesday. And it's uh, Jersey VTS, I think it's channel 14. Well, let's write this down because we will definitely forget. J-E-V-T-S. -J 14. Yep. Albert Pontoon. Birth six. Tuesday evening. You have to call Jersey BTS when you are one hour out. So these are the thunderstorms we're trying to avoid. Friday the 14th was our original arrival date. That actually doesn't look too bad. But um, yeah, Wednesday and Thursday look less good. And obviously this could change in terms of timing anyway, because it's still only Saturday. Tuesday is looking pretty lovely weather-wise. Sunday tomorrow we will go, we're here in Roscoff at the moment and we will go just here, this little island there, that's where we're going to go and then on Monday, it looks like Monday we'll have to stay put and then Tuesday we'll have again very light winds to Jersey. Good plan. Thanks very much. Yeah, see you on Tuesday. Bye bye. So we just got a lovely call from Jersey Marina. They are super polite. Um, he said, "He said, uh, are you sitting down? I'm like, I've got some bad news. And I'm like, oh, what is it? He said, look, uh, the British government have just changed, or the Jersey government, just changed the legislation for France. You're now on an amber list. So you have to do five days of isolation. And I'm like, brilliant. 
absolutely brilliant and like, i said look we just did i said we've done 21 days at sea getting across the atlantic i said five days where we just i said can we plug in and take and get water he's like yeah you can plug in so You're like a working holiday <laughs> we got netflix we got food we got par bakes we're gonna pop out now and just pick st get a little bit more food yeah i think that's a good idea yeah. so we're leaving tomorrow to go to il brahat yeah and il brahat has a little car for, so yeah. we'll stock up last yeah. minute he's like are you still coming i'm like yeah damn straight we're still coming <laughs> so what are we doing now can i just walk take a walk into town we're leaving tomorrow morning so okay yeah all right life is a winding road no telling where it goes driving through days and nights won't stop for traffic lights and i i really wanna know really wanna know we went into one of the little shops here and we literally bought one tiny little thing of milk two bottles of cider and one packet of almond cakes like the high like the high functioning <laughs> alcoholic shopping basket <laughs> we're gonna have to find another supermarket i've just got to be better with my fish catch yeah you do well tomorrow when we leave i'll get the lines out i'll catch us a sea bass and three mackerel <laughs> enough fish for five days <laughs> crazy isn't it mm -hmm. it must be just about low water right uh, this, is, this is like 101 reasons why you don't want navigation up please stop swearing while i'm recording it takes so much work for me to be oh we got a thumbs down because out. of that because yeah. of your swearing in the last episode my swearing yeah. what you said the f word i bleeped it yeah but someone said doesn't matter someone said doesn't matter that you bleep it out i can still see your mouth move thumbs down ah oh, they must be really easily offended they were easily offended oh dear Look, the only reason we don't swear is because A, some people are very sensitive and watch this, and B, people watch this with their children, which is fair enough. Exactly. But C, uh, YouTube don't like swearing. People are offended, then I apologise. <laughs> Never ever come drinking with us, especially <laughs> me. Huh. That weed looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Despite this coastline being vaguely familiar from two sailing trips seven and eight years ago, we had never visited Roscoff because it used to be that the only options for sailing boats was a very rolly anchorage with a very wet dinghy ride or the old drying fishing harbour which really wasn't suitable for larger yachts. Now that the new marina had been completed, we were able to stop off at this historic port and it was so full of charm. The North Brittany coastline really is unlike anywhere else in the world. Hour by hour, the landscape transforms as the tide comes in and out. We sailed through this channel on our way in and navigating it requires skill and good timing, as you can see from these images. However, as wild and unforgiving as this coastline is for mariners, it also holds a unique and exquisite beauty. Good morning, everyone. We are uh, about to leave Roscoff for somewhere called Il Brahat. And uh, I think it's gonna be about 40 mile sail today. <clears throat> and hopefully we actually get to do some sailing because at the moment there's very little wind. We've actually done our tidal calculations, we hope correctly this time, and we're gonna actually get the tide all the way up. So mm -hmm. hopefully <laughs> we both checked it twice, so. If we've, had, <clears throat> if we've got it wrong again, then we've only got ourselves to blame. Ooh. Babe, there's just like a lobster pot right ahead. Lots of fishing boats out, quite a few lobster pots around. A little bit of a uh, swell situation going on. A couple of other boats, quite a few other boats actually. Obviously we're not the only ones who have uh, decided to take the tide east. <laughs> we're going east today. Everything is covered in dew, so everything's very damp. But I reckon it's gonna be a nice uh, sunny day today. It's already quite mild. The sun came up about half an hour ago. So we should start to get 
rays of morning light swathing our faces. Four and a half knots over the ground and the tide has just turned. So I'm calling this like slack, which basically means I've got to get back in and scrub the bottom. Yeah. Uh, four and a half is not what needs to be happening. speed over the last couple of hours at 5.3 knots. We are now doing 6, 6.5. Uh, we're coming into full full current now, so we should get to the next couple of hours. This swell's uh, a little bit annoying though. I'm hoping that we get some kind of like optimal morning winds as they're kind of... I don't think that's going to happen. I just uh, checked the forecast because we've got no wind at the moment, do we? Uh, we have... No, nothing. Nothing of any, of any, no. Sheeted the main in hard. Stop it clacking around. Finally got a little bit of wind. Uh, only about eight knots, but it's enough to keep the boat steady. Much more comfortable at the moment, isn't it, Nick, than it was? Yeah, she's the water quite well. Yeah. And we've got quite a bit of current with us as well. We're doing about eight knots. Um, we've averaged so far 5.8 knots, which is pretty good and our top speed has been 9.2 so hopefully we've got another hour at least of you know this amount of tide with us and then it'll just start to drop off and then uh yeah well hopefully we can get in before it turns so high water so 6 17 it changed okay that's four hours so we should get another hour of another hour mm. of like this mm. then it will slacken off then we get slack so we've got three hours before the tide turns against us. By my calculation, we should have to punch a little bit of tide for the last hour, maybe two. Okay. Well, having the tide with us was good while it lasted. But we're back down to uh, Two and a half knots now, punching tight again. Motors on, winds are very light. Not really doing much for us at the moment, unfortunately. However, we are almost there. I can see the island. We just need to go all the way around the island. So how many more miles do you think we've got? Six, it'll take us three hours. Right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's, that's right. So, <laughs> so close, but so far. Uh, uh, oh well. Hopefully we find a nice anchorage later and we can settle all down for a couple of days. Be an anchor. I'm quite excited about that. Enjoy our last stop in France before we head off to the Channel Islands. Is that ETA? It's been up to 4 p.m. but I'm not sure, sure. I mean the water's pissing around the, the tip of the island. So against us. Yeah. That's so frustrating. It's right there. <laughs> Distance to destination, six miles. So close. Please don't tell me I'm gonna be staring at that island for the next three hours. And then some. Oh well. I mean, we don't have anything better to do with our day than just to sit around waiting to arrive, so it could be worse. At least the weather's nice. Squeeze half a knot out of her or something. I've been wrong before. I was waiting in the undertow. We spent all this morning congratulating ourselves on like getting our tidal calculations correct, which we did, I hasten to add. But yeah, all that kind of smug satisfaction has been like wiped clear. The last couple of hours has been like painful, really painful. We've been doing about two knots and we are revving the engine trying to get everything out of the sails. I'm just seeing like the island that we're trying to get to 
just like stay basically practically stationary is kind of annoying. But it is what it is. It's a beautiful day. It's nice and warm. This is just our life, you know. It doesn't really matter if we spend an extra couple of hours at sea. Like we have literally nothing better to do today. Should get in like soonish. <laughs> Soon's a relative term this afternoon, but. <laughs> We'll get in at some point this evening and uh, congratulate ourselves with a bottle of cider which is currently chilling in the fridge. So what does all that red, all these red stripes mean? It's uncharted variable depths, variable yeah. hazards. It basically means don't sail there. But That's one reason why things are taking quite a bit longer than we expected. We have to go all the way around. Well, if, there's, if it's a red hashed area on a chart and you sail through it, then you know. You're a fool. You're not a fool, but you need to have local knowledge. Um, but you know, look at that boy, look at the water traveling, pissing past that boy and knocking it. That's the tidal flow we're dealing with. Nearly there. Anchorage is just behind me. Visibility is like really poor today. It's super hazy, isn't it? But yeah, I can see that there's plenty of boats in the Anchorage, so we'll find a little spot. Pine trees. I love that smell. Yeah. We've been at sea all day, so yeah. literally you kind of pick up a sense of land much, much stronger. Oh, lovely. Sounds of silence, eh? Sounds of silence. What a beautiful anchorage. This is going to be nice for a couple of days. A few other boats here at the moment, but I'm pretty sure that quite a few of them are going to leave. I reckon this is a perfect place to spend the last couple of nights um, in France. Oh, that's sad. Cheers. Mm. Is that welcome after a long day? Yeah, it's been a long day today. <laughs>